In a world full of crossovers and SUVs, it's really refreshing to see a brand new sports car coming out for 2022. I'm here in Plano, Texas at Toyota's headquarters, and this right here is the all new 2022 Toyota GR86. Let's take a first look. Now, last November, I was in California where Subaru unveiled the all-new BRZ. And as you guys know, the two vehicles share a same platform. So we were already expecting Toyota to do an all-new version of the GR86. Now, speaking of which, the name GR86 is new for 2022 because previously Toyota called this the FRS when it was a Scion, and then they just called it the 86. But now they've added the GR, which stands for Gazoo Racing. All the performance-oriented Toyotas are going to have that GR badge. I want to start, of course, with the front end because this vehicle here has the same front fascia as the BRZ, but Toyota has grafted on a new front end with its own unique grille, the Toyota emblem, slightly different look to the uh, air intake scoops, which some of them, again, as you can see, are functional. You have full LED headlights, which are standard with this new LED daytime running light. The vehicle itself has a very kind of Porsche and Jaguar look to the front end. It has styling combinations of both vehicles. I think it's really going to do well. It looks especially nice in person. For once, I actually think that the Toyota looks better versus the Subaru version, which previously I used to think that the Subaru BRZ was the better looking option. Now, Toyota says the platform is basically an evolution of what they used to offer on the first generation model. So the dimensions are pretty much unchanged. You have more aluminum in the structure in the hood, in the doors. So the weight pretty much stays the same at around 31, 3,100 pounds. The wheels have also been slightly upgraded. They offer it in two different trim configurations, the base and this premium. This is the premium model, which gives you an 18 inch wheel with a black finish. You also have 215 by 40 Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tires. So finally, some decent tires. This vehicle, of course, remains a low slung rear wheel drive sports car with an available manual transmission and a six speed uh, automatic. The premium version also has these black painted mirrors. You still cannot get a sunroof on this type of vehicle. But what I want to show you guys really here is this new spoiler on the premium version. You can see it's, it's almost like a ducktail style spoiler. It looks really good from this angle when you look at it. When you look at it from the back here, it doesn't look quite as tall. But this is probably, again, my favorite angle of this vehicle and the BRZ. I love these new full LED taillights, which have kind of this black portion here that looks like it connects the two taillight modules together. These are full LED taillight design with LED turn signals. You have dual exhaust tips, which looks looks good. Um, the engine in this vehicle, we'll talk about in just a moment, is larger. It offers more power. The trunk capacity, which sadly I can't open it. This is just a very early first look. But let me know in the comments below if you guys like the styling of this or the BRZ. I'm kind of more keen to the Toyota version for the first time. I just like the simple, cleaner looks of the front fascia and the rear of the GR86. Now, just like the BRZ, the big news this year, of course, is what's going on underneath the hood. This is a rear wheel drive sports car. Now, of course, you're still gonna see the Toyota Subaru you know, badge here because this is a Subaru boxer engine with Toyota's D4S direct injection technology. It's a bigger engine this year, just like in the Subaru. It's a 2.4 liter naturally aspirated flat boxer four, so about 20% larger in terms of its displacement. And we get a little bit more power, 228 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque. That torque figure and the horsepower figure is nearly 30 more versus the previous two liters. So this should address, of course, the power shortcomings. Toyota says the manual version will get to 60 in around 6.1 seconds. The automatic, like this one here, will do it in around 6.6 uh, 6 seconds. So not terribly quick, but at least it's not the seven and eight seconds that you had for the previous generation. This remains a rear wheel drive vehicle, of course, um, and Fuel economy, Toyota has not announced that yet, but this should do uh, roughly around 25 MPG. The weight figures is where Toyota and Subaru have kept this in check. This weighs in at around just over 3,100 pounds because the aluminum hood, the aluminum doors, there's just more aluminum in the structure. It's a little bit stiffer, and Toyota, because of that, Toyota has been able to keep the weight in check, so this should still be a relatively pure and fun-to-drive sports car out on the curvy roads and, of course, out on the track. Now let's take a look at the interior of the new GR86. Now, first of all, just like the new BRZ that I was in last year, this interior looks practically identical. This is almost a carbon copy of the Subaru, which is not a bad thing. I mean, we do have finally a decent infotainment system in here, which the original FRS launched with a Scion Pioneer head unit, which was just trash. This is an eight inch touchscreen that has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Sadly, the car is not on, uh, so I can't show it to you. Although, there we go. The key is in the vehicle. So let's go ahead and turn this, this screen on because I wasn't able to show you that in the Subaru. You can see here the menu structure has been redesigned. This kind of reminds me of Subaru's Starlink. So this may very well be a Subaru branded system. You can see this one here doesn't have factory GPS, which you won't need anyways because you'll have the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Uh, the system itself, you can see 
includes a backup camera. There's the reverse camera. It has decent resolution uh, and it has parking sensors, which is nice. If you don't have, um, if you're looking for a 360 camera, it is not available. And as you can see, there's Alex on autos. We have this really big event here with all these journalists. It kind of reminds me of the auto show, but let's get back to this interior because I do like what Toyota has done here. The materials you can see are soft touch on the dashboard. There's some more Alcantara on the dash here. In addition to the, what you find on the seats, the seats have been completely redesigned by the way. They're a little bit more aggressive in terms of their bolstering extension. You do have two level heated seats. The seats themselves are just a manual adjustment for both, even on the passenger side or the driver side, it's manual. You have a slightly padded area over here with some covered center console storage. You have two USB ports over there. Uh, you have a shifter here. This is actually the automatic, but it tries to look like a manual. It's a gated shifter. This is a six speed auto. I am more curious obviously to drive the manual version, but Toyota says the automatic is now quicker by about a second and a half versus the previous generation. The instrument panel here you can see has a fully digital display, although the graphics could be a little bit nicer. This is very similar to what we find in the BRZ. This is a huge upgrade, of course, over the previous generation. The switch gear in here is surprisingly some of the older style Toyota switch gear like for example this cruise control st stock I thought Toyota had gotten rid of this thing you know from the 90s but again I guess it still works so it doesn't surprise me that they've kept all this around overall the cabin feels about the same in terms of comfort and space uh, but this is not what I would say a roomy vehicle but if you're comparing it to a Miata this does offer significantly more space because it has a back seat that you could technically use to put things in not necessarily people now, Toyota says the new GR86 will be going on sale in fall of this year, and they haven't announced final pricing just yet. The old one was starting at around $27,000, $26,000. I suspect this one's going to be a little bit more, maybe around 30 ish thousand for the fully loaded premium version, especially if you guys go for the automatic transmission. Really, in a world full of so many crossover SUVs, it's really refreshing to see a new sports car, especially one that's like this, lightweight, rear-wheel drive, very low center of gravity, and relatively affordable for the tuning market. Now, of course, some of you may balk at the fact that Toyota didn't make this a turbocharged vehicle. Remember, turbo, tur turbos add complexity, they add cost. So I actually really applaud Toyota and Subaru for keeping this a naturally aspirated engine because a lot of owners are going to be slapping on turbos on this anyways. They're going to be doing their own builds. And really to see something like this that's so pure, that's so lightweight, the only competitor really that it has is the BRZ and of course the Miata, which is a much smaller vehicle, it's a roadster. So I'm just happy to see a new sports car coming to market in 2022. For Redline Reviews here at Toyota's headquarters in Plano, Texas, I'm Sofian Bay.